my greetings to you all today we discuss a valediction forbidding morning written by john dunn john dunn was born on 21st january 1572 he married anne more this poem a valediction was written to a heavily pregnant anne in 1611 or 1612 as then prepared to travel to continental europe with sir robert drury it was later published in 1633 as part of the collection of songs and sonnets following his death or to the poem a valediction forbidding morning A valediction forbidding morning by John Dunn was written for his wife Anne. It was published. It was not published until after his death, appearing in the collection Songs and Sonnets. The speaker opens with an image of good men dying quietly, softly, urging their souls to leave their bodies. These virtuous deaths. are so impossible that the dying men's friends disagree about whether or not the men have stopped breathing yet the speaker argues that he and the lover he is bidding farewell to her so it should take this death as model and part uh, quietly without any commotion or much noise they should not give in to the temptation to weep and sigh excessively it should be very private it should not be publicized in fact grieving so openly would degrade their private love by broadcasting it to the ordinary public so the natural earthly disturbances such as earthquakes hurt and scare human beings ordinary people notice these events happening and wonder what they mean however the movements of the heavens while being larger and more significant go unnoticed by most of the people so a beautiful comparison is implied here so his his, uh, his the relationship between uh, he he and his wife is being compared to uh, the different movements and different uh, earthly occurrences so they should uh, they should not feel others bored because boring common uh, place people feel a kind of love that because it depends on sensual connection people who are more uh, uh, more concentrating on physical uh, connection rather than mental they can handle separation so being physically apart takes away the physical bond that their love depends on the speaker and his lover on the other hand experience a more rare and a special kind of bond which is very a unique and what we say very spiritual they can't even understand it themselves but they are linked mentally certain of one another on a non physical plane because of this it matters less to them when their bodies are apart the souls of the lovers are unified by love although the speaker must leave their souls will not be broken apart instead they will expand to cover the distance between them as fine metal like gold expands when it is hammered so when the gold is hammered it is it expands but it never break so the physical distance the physical distance between the lovers is being compared to 
the expansion of the metal gold. If their souls are in fact individual, they are nevertheless linked in the way the legs of drawing compass are linked. Another beautiful uh, comparison. The lovers are being compared uh, with a compass. The soul of the lover is like the stationary foot of the compass, which is very firm which does not appear to move itself but actually does respond to the other foot's movement. Unless one foot is firm and stationary, the other foot can't move. It can't walk. It can't walk. So the stationary compass foot sits in the center of a paper. When the other compass foot moves further away, the stationary foot changes its angle to lean in that direction as if longing to be near uh, with its partner. So as the moving foot returns, closing the compass, the stationary foot stands straight again, seeming alert and excited. What a beautiful uh, comparison. So the speaker's lover, he argues, will be like the stationary foot while he himself must travel a uh, indirect route or uh, far off places. He, uh, her fixed position, the lover's fixed position provides him with the stability to create a perfect circle which ends exactly where it began. So his return or his coming back to uh, his house depends on how firm and how strong his lover is. So bringing actually this perfect uh, stationary foot brings the speaker back to his lover once again. So the poem divided in the sets of four lines or uh, quatrines then also uh, structured this piece with a consistent pattern of rhyme following the scheme of ABAB. -B. In regards to meter, uh, Dan chose to use iambic tetrameter. This means that each line contains four sets of two beats. Generally, the first one of these is unstressed and the second one stressed. There are a few moments uh, though where uh, this reverses and uh, instead the first syllable is stressed. So there he followed trochaic tetrameter. So now about the themes, it's about love and distance, physical love versus spiritual love. Okay, so that's all about the poem. Thank you. Hope you have enjoyed.